This video was supported by Innocent and their 32MTV 144Hz gaming monitor. I think it's really funny when you start drawing stuff out in CAD before you actually do a project. You sometimes kind of forget how much time it's going to take. And then during the project you get kind of frustrated because in CAD you can just like, you know, a couple minutes you can build something. Today we're upgrading the 3D scanning station. If you haven't seen the previous video, basically I bought myself a CR scan Raptor to do the projects that I do on the channel. So I decided straight off the bat to make a setup which would be really easy. Just a single button, everything turns on, the lights turn on. It's an ideal situation to scan objects in. That way I hope that all the bottlenecks are alleviated. Now what I did basically is I created a another 60x120 system. So that's basically a desktop where, which is 60 by 120 centimeters. And internally there's a lot of space where you can route cables and that kind of stuff. The reason I do it so simply is because sometimes you just need a setup really quickly. And this is a really nice method for creating something that's still upgradable, right? So if we wanted to add a switch over here, for example, we could jigsaw out this piece and add a 3D print component into that. There's enough room within this body to put all kinds of cables and that kind of stuff. I wanted to find myself some kind of metallic round object that I could use on the turntable. The reason I wanted it to be metallic is because I ordered some helping hands which have a magnetic connection. So I thought it would be really useful if we had, you know, we could stick them onto the metallic surface with those magnets. Uh, eventually I found this like safety pit situation which if you have like an open fire you put one of these underneath so to say the only issue with these things is that every single one of them was really damaged because they had been like scraped over the floor and there's no real concern with these things looking good right so i had to sand it down and i bought some of this paint which is uh, specially made for like metallic surfaces you can buy some really awesome like i'm really interested in getting into the paint world and getting really detailed into that so once that was drying out, the LED panel actually arrived. I ordered this like massive 120 cm by 30 cm LED panel. I thought this would act like a massive softbox, but at a lower profile, which is true. But I was, I did have the concern that the light quality would be less. There were no CRO ratings on the website, which is kind of concerning. But yeah, really simply just marked out where we needed to cut out a gap and Kind of sad in this situation, we had to get rid of quite a lot of the wood. Maybe it would have been better to buy like a 120 by 60 centimeter LED panel and just skip one multiplex sheet. After that, the LED panel fit in there perfectly, but we still need like a control box so that we can actually turn the LED panel on. So the control box is maybe too fancy of a part for what we're doing over here. But basically it's like a plate that we can change out as well so if the design ever changes and we need to make it do something different we can just change out the pre printed plate and what it is basically is something like this put some internal supports over there and in the middle of it we'll have a gap for the tumbler switch to go in place and then i cut an extension cord in half because the switch is at the top i need a cable that goes back down as well uh, which the 3D scanner connects to so that when we flick the switch everything goes on right the light goes on and the 3D scanner goes on I don't necessarily want the 3D scanner to be on when I'm not using it I'm not sure if that's handy or if it will degrade the quality of it but the reason I'm building it like this we don't actually need the light for this project I mean the 3D scanner has lights built in but I'm figuring out like some workbenches that I'm trying to make for the channel and I first want to yeah try and find a nice way of doing that and a nice style of doing that so what i really like is to have that lighting in the workbench itself instead of in the room that it's in so that if we ever move location so to say we can just take the workbench with us and, and put it in any kind of uh, situation any kind of room and have it look half decent on camera as well in terms of how we're going to be mounting this i bought some of these scaffolding tube mounts railing system holders and those are exactly the same as the ones that are already on the setup but these are like in grey uh, the reason they're grey is because these are a lot cheaper, they're like half the price and um, this is still a prototype so it's probably going to change and I didn't want to spend the extra money on the black version so I could pretty much paint these myself I 3D printed some guiding caps which go into the scaffolding tube mount holders and then you know you bolt them on from the other side and they kind of fall into place not the most rugged solution because that entire top compartment isn't really stuck to the setup in any way other than the 3D printed components, right? So I keep trying to move it 
and then there's quite a lot of like flex in this whole system. The next issue I really wanted to tackle is how do you actually view what you're scanning and how do you record what you're scanning because previously what I'd do is I put my laptop next to it and then you know scan onto that and you know save those screen recordings onto that. Problem is I don't actually edit on the laptop so all those screen recordings I have to take an extra step to get them into the editing software right. Uh, so I want to connect it directly onto the Windows rig that I edit these videos on as well so that the screen recording is right there. So Innocent actually reached out a little while ago, offered to send me the 32 M2V. I was pretty impressed by the, uh, the quality of that panel. It's 4K, 144Hz, way overkill for this scenario. So it's a pretty nice panel actually, it has some features on there which are not really gaming oriented, but it's still a gaming oriented monitor. So it's kind of a combo package, right? You can use it for gaming and you can use it for your work related tasks. So it has a 90 watt USB-C port, so that's really handy if you're using a laptop like a MacBook Pro. It'll immediately charge the laptop as well. And that's also why the power brick is 240 watts. In terms of design, it's really nicely constructed. It has this almost, it's not too gamery. It does have LEDs on the back, but it looks industrial on the back. And it is made of plastic, it's not metal or anything, but it does look like metal. And it actually has speakers on the monitor as well which is tried out and they're actually quite decent. I think you do have to have a wall behind it though so that it actually bounces off the wall and kind of hits you when you have it in the center of a room. It sounds a little bit hollow, but something you don't often see on external displays actually is some kind of brightness monitor. So when you're using a laptop, for example, the brightness also automatically adjusts. So if you're sitting in a dark room, your brightness don't get blown out, so to say. This one actually has a brightness monitor in there, so it automatically, or it can automatically adjust the brightness if you turn that feature on. So if you're looking for a new gaming monitor or just a, like a, a work monitor, this is really nice. Definitely check them out. I left a link in the description down below. Special thanks to Innocent for sending this out. You're probably going to see it more often on our channel as well because I really appreciate like mini LED panels. Uh, way more than OLED panels actually because I just don't want to deal with burn-in and that kind of stuff. The next day the van panel that we painted was all dried up and we could start work on like the Lazy Susan. So I, ha I had this multiplex sheet which I used initially. I cut that down to size to actually fit inside of that metallic round sheet thing so that we could connect the Lazy Susan to it. Uh, what I was afraid of is that it would ruin a scan if it kept like decentered, so to say. So you know I marked out the center of it and then I used a piece of scrap wood to mark out where to place that Lazy Susan. You know, it's pretty difficult to line up in the center there. I did use some bolts to, you know, increase the height a little bit. And that way I screwed it into the wooden panel. I actually thought initially we would have to glue the wooden panel onto that metallic piece, but that wasn't the case. It was just like flush mount with it and that holds it in place perfectly. So I've been using the setup for the past week with the Lazy Susan on there and with the magnetic helping hands. That is a really big benefit of this this whole situation. I can highly recommend getting yourself some helping hands if you have a 3D scanner. It just works so much better it, like, instead of like relying on the software side of things. You can just do it in one go. What's also really nice is the helping hands are kind of shiny and reflective. 3D scanners have a very difficult time dealing with shiny and reflective things and so oftentimes the helping hand doesn't even show up in the 3D scan. So it's kind of like an invisible thing. If you have any suggestions on the setup, this is definitely not like its final resting place. What are you saying, dude?